What, what is the work that you do over here? Our purpose is uh, to control the flight of the beetle. I studied many things about the uh, kind of muscle configuration and neural network of this living uh, beetle. And also the, I studied leg control. Um, this is also by stimulating the muscles? Yes, leg muscles. And we can do some of the different walking gait motion. Uh, you stimulate all the muscles individually? Individually. So the, the beetle ha actually has no control over what it's doing. Yeah. So you basically make it into a, a, a robot, actually. Like a robot. Of course, of course some error, but the, that error is not so uh, big uh, problem. I'd be very excited to see the work that you're doing okay. right now. Let's go to the lab. Yeah, uh, great. Hi. Oh, yeah, sorry. So could you tell us what, what, what you do here? And we use this system to detect the, the leg motion, so, so we can put some marker on, small marker on the leg. And so this is, this is the beetle that, that you're working with? Yes. You can see the many wires, right? And uh, my student at the town find he is very good at the implantation and working on this uh, leg motion control, actually. And he knows, about, uh, he knows about the location of the leg muscles very well. Can you tell me a bit what, what you're going to do? Uh, basically, I will press uh, this. There are two buttons. Uh -huh. One can change the working gate. The other one is I can change the step frequency. That means how fast the leg moves. Yeah, yeah. and these LED lights, they correspond each to a muscle. Yes, so in total eight muscles. Yeah, OK. okay. Let's so, see. So the step frequency is 0 0.125 hertz. So it's tripod. So it's very slow now. And so now it's alternating its left yes, and right. Yes, alternating. So if I want to increase the step frequency, I need to press this button. Uh -huh. So that if I press once, so it's faster now. Now it's 0 0.25 hertz. <laughs> so amazing that you just press a button and the beetle starts walking. Mm -hmm. It's, I, I don't know, it seems almost unreal. Uh, that you can that you can kind of achieve this in a in a living creature. If I press one more time, uh -huh. 0 .2, 0 0.5 hertz, so it's faster. Then that's <laughs> this is really amazing. One hertz. <coughs> if I want to change to galloping, I press this button, so it will change to galloping. So yes, it's galloping. And this is when it runs faster, basically. Yeah, it's, it, the step frequency is one hertz. Uh-huh. Now it's two hertz. Wow. Yeah. It struggles itself, but it still obeys the stimulation signals. Uh-huh. And do you think, is he struggling <laughs> to kind of stop these stimulation signals? Uh, yes, I think so. But still, it obeys. You yeah? Can see. Yeah, very clearly. And this just keeps on working like this? Uh, it yes. It doesn't get used to it or something? It doesn't... No, no, no. I stimulate even you know, like for more than half an hour, so it's still like this. We stimulate more than seven days, more than one week. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it keeps working? Yes, yes. You're putting in electrical signals in, in, into the beetle now, mm -hmm. but is it using up its own uh, yeah, energy source, basically? Is it using the food that it eats to drive the muscles, or mm -hmm. are the muscles driven by the electricity? Uh, yes, the food. So you have to feed it yeah. to be able to yes, keep on doing yes, this? Yes, yes. Looking at this thing, it's it's unbelievable actually that that humans can uh, you know take over control over basically over the willpower of this insect because the muscles are being driven by the insect itself I mean it has to feed it it has to eat to be able to move the muscles and all that they are doing is putting a bit of electrical stimulation into the muscles and they can control it to a degree that's amazing if you think about it these may just be the first stages of this but if you think about where this could go this is really incredible and how, how long would a beetle like this live? And the, the, the natural, the regular beetles uh, survive for three months to six months. Even after the implantation, beetle can survive for several months. Uh -huh. We have never seen the beetle die right after the stimulation. So it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't really hurt? No. So this is the walking part of the robot, and mm -hmm. you're also working on, on the flight, flight control. control. And you're also doing that here in the building? Yeah, this building. Or the uh, technical next building. OK. Wow, this is a very impressive room. <laughs> we like a bit of to fly as long as possible. Then we use this smooth paper, and we release the beetle and the flying beetle even crash on the walls. Still, the beetle go back to the uh, arena uh -huh. to fly. Yeah. 
uh, we make the air gap between the paper and the actual wall. Because the beetle crash on the wall, then the, the beetle and the, uh, our device does not be uh, damaged. Should I imagine it? Do you have a remote control or? We use we remote. A we remote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All I gotta do is blow on its back to make its wings go, and then I can control it with this controller by pressing a button and moving it to a side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, it worked. It went right. Can I try again? You can also put other sensors on the chip, right? Yes. Because I can imagine that only steering a beetle yeah. doesn't do much yet for someone who's uh -huh. buried under rubble. For this commission, uh, the important thing is to uh, locate missing live person, right? live people. And live people is born, right? Therefore, the, by set, uh, setting some sensor, we can detect the, uh, some living people. And the beetle can go mo move or walking or flying to the, uh, the, the heat source of the living people and find the location. That would be very useful. Uh, uh, and do you see other applications as well? Criminal investigation will find the, some, you know, the terrorist or something, you know. We are very serious to use this type of beetle for peaceful application to save people and to save the uh, world right? peacefully. Yeah. I think the most fascinating thing that I've learned over these past few days is that technology and nature are creeping more and more together and that we might be heading towards a future where technology and nature might become indistinguishable. <laughs> <laughs>